it's No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. We've been gone for a few days, and I've come back to you with a temporary new yes. co-host, Candy yes. Chase. You've been on once, once or twice before, yeah. and uh, yeah, happy to have you back. Thank you so yes. much for inviting me back. I know you're. Appreciate it. I know you're excited. I am so excited to be here. Love I, it. I was worried you were going to be having some trepidation, but you seem pretty. You know, you do chillaxed. intimidate me. So. <laughs> Just gonna leave so, it there. Lori, Lori's in uh, <laughs> Texas doing a Republican thing, so um, she'll awesome. be gone all week. So it's I'm batching it. Thanks for coming to the bachelor party. Hey, it might be the only time I've ever invited to a bachelor party. So thank you. <laughs> all right. So we've got an interesting show. We've got two guests tonight, and uh, I think it's gonna be very interesting. We're covering some some interesting topics, and um, uh, one is Representative Jim Casper. And we're going to be talking about some important things that are going on in the legislature, like pension reform, what it all means, why it's important. And we've got Representative Josh Boucher on, and he is the minority uh, leader. And so he's the number one Dem in the House, and we're going to be talking about stuff. We're going to have a, a good, uh, amicable discussion and, and see how that goes. First, what? I want to talk about um, what's going on in the district meetings in the Republican Party. Okay. So, Candy, what's going on is that, you know, as you know, the each political party uh, is divided into 47 districts. Your legislators come in 47 districts. Those district parties have reorganization meetings, and at those reorganization meetings, they determine who their chair is and their vice chair, secretary, treasurer. Um, depending on the year, they sometimes also then choose which legislators to endorse and so on and so forth. Uh, there is a, a bit of a, a, I'm not sure if we'd call it a wave, but there is an, a, an uprising almost. And what's happening is in some, not all by any means, um, of the district Republican parties, there is a grassroots movement to get new people in. People are upset. And, uh, and it goes both ways. Now, by the way, folks, this is uh, something that occurs all the time. Um, I, you know, I, I can recall one in a district in particular four years ago, a complete takeover, uh, and, and others before that. This time round, so far, I, actually I haven't been keeping track, but there have been a few where the grassroots or the, I guess if you want to identify them as the, the more conservative uh, people in the, in the district are coming up and taking over. There's a few of those, but there's actually been one, I think it was District 39, Ben Simons. There was a movement where they had people come in and they took out Ben Simons and, and others that I, I guess you'd consider more conservative. So it goes both ways. But along with the district take takeovers where they're changing out the, the officers, um, and by the way, that bears some importance, I guess, on um, like overall state policy because the district chairs make up the state committee. And, uh, and the state executive committee, well, state committee, and they make a lot of the rules of the Republican Party, determine the course, so on and so forth. So in that realm of politics, of which I have very little involvement, um, that's important. But along with that is also some movement to censure legislators. Have you been hearing about that at all? Yeah. You have. So censuring is a basically, uh, the way I look at it is a, it's a vote of no confidence. The people that are censuring you are saying, you're doing a bad job because of this reason or this, this, and that reason, and we're censuring you. What does it mean, practically speaking? Nothing. It's a, I guess it's a, you know, you do the walk of shame and you're, you have some embarrassment. Perhaps if you have a contested election coming up, that can be used against you. But some legislators are being censured by people in their districts, and it's happening um, primarily at the districts where there is a group of people coming in and, and sort of taking over and then censuring. Now, from what I understand, censuring is occurring for two reasons. One, um, as an admonition for expelling Representative Luke Simons. And uh, on the other hand, and in some cases, a list of bills that seem to go against the Republican Party platform. So bigger spending, tax increases, things like that. Um, and it's causing a lot of consternation a lot of consternation, and here's, here's my issue. One, I think that overall this type of thing is healthy. You have people, 
that are energized and they're activated, like, like you have been when we had you on the show as a guest um, and, and we talked to you about um, your group and, and being activated. So it's, I think it's encouraging, whether, whether you agree specifically with what's happening, it's encouraging that people who identify as Republicans are activated and energized and going to committee uh, meetings, reorganization meetings. Uh, the big question, though, is will they continue to be involved? Right. Because we have something that's exciting on one hand, new involvement, new excitement, new demand for accountability, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Again, nothing, it doesn't even need to be about Republicans. It doesn't need to be about North Dakotans. It's about accountability from elected officials. Mm -hmm. So I think that's fantastic. If there's a concern, it's on whether, whether people are doing it because they've been um, and, and encouraged or bold, emboldened to do it, to just kind of like stick, it, stick the middle finger right. at, at the man, and then they're gone, in which case that's disruptive, but it's not productive. Right. Now, time will tell on whether it's productive uh, or just sticking the middle finger. I, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I have been identified as a person being behind all of this as the mastermind, oh, as the mastermind. Yes, Rick. I know. And <laughs> so that's why I want to bring, bring it up because it's important to understand this is grassroots. Now, are there some people in the state that are helping to organize people that are dissatisfied? Uh, yes, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's not me, it's not any legislator I know of, uh, but, but certainly there, there's always people that will stand out, like you, not in this particular case, but like you as, as a person to say, hey, you know what, I'm willing to stand up and I'm willing to help organize things and affect some change. Um, I think what is co most concerning is that there may be situations in which censuring is not warranted, maybe, but the thing is, during a motion of censure, an elected official has an opportunity to respond. And so for they? instance, for me, I, ha I, would, I would have no fear at all about a motion to censure because I can defend mm -hmm. every one of my votes, yeah. almost every one of my votes. Once in a while, I'm sleeping. But, <laughs> I love but, your honesty. Yeah, but, but, you know, we should be able to defend it. And the concern is when you identify someone, it would be, it's human nature because it's easier to point to a, b a bad guy like, aha, mm -hmm. my problems are stemming from that person or that group of people, right. it's much easier to sort of say that's the case rather than, holy crap, this is a time for me to step back and reevaluate. Are these people full of crap? In which case I'm going to stand up and in a diplomatic way express that. Or am I maybe in need of a check to vote differently? And we're, tomorrow night, you and I are going to be talking about some cronyism that's going on. $5 million for a handout to build a, a park in Jamestown, an amusement park for, by a private organization. There's different crony. So we look at what's going on. There's reason for people to be upset. And it's not because there's bad guys, bad legislator guys that want to take people out. We're too busy with other stuff in our lives to worry about that. But on the other hand, I do want to say, folks, if you're, if you're energized and activated, then, then do that. Be that person. Be the change. But you can't be the change just by coming in and disrupting, and then, and then you, you're gone. You're just gone. You have to commit. You have to stay in if you're going to be committed. So anyway, that's my two cents. I like it. I could say more, but we probably need to go to break. Well, you'll have an opportunity to say more next time. <laughs> Folks, stick with us. Representative Jim Casper is next. Occurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. 
times may have changed, but the hard work that we've put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Yiro's, with the region's only Yiro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Hello, welcome back to No Apologies. We've got Representative Jim Casper with us and uh, a, a new temporary co-host, Kendi Chase, yes. who is with Ladies of Another View that is on this wonderful channel at 4.30 p.m. Yes, thank you. You are very welcome. So Jim, happy to have you. Glad to be here, right? We had a date, we had a date previously and, and I think I messed it up for time, so I appreciate you giving me the time and, and, and uh, being a guest tonight. Glad to be here. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're coming down to the end of session. I was a little dismayed to hear that we may go well into next week. But it sounded like in the caucus. Very, yeah. very, very um, sad to hear that. <laughs> 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 um, but there is a bill that you have in your committee that I think is fascinating and it's incredibly important and it's, and it's all sort of like coming together at this very late stage for, for numerous reasons. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Senate Bill 2046? Well, Senate Bill 2046 is uh, the, the main focus from, from the perspective of our committee is, is focusing on the defined benefit plan for the, not only the North Dakota PERS employees, the state employees, but also the political subdivisions. There's approximately uh, uh, 11,000 uh, 11, state employees in the plan, and there's uh, 12,000 or 14,000 uh, political sub-employees. And they're in a defined benefit plan which guarantees them a monthly income when they retire, which means the defined benefit plan for that guarantee creates a liability from the state of North Dakota and the political subdivisions to guarantee those benefits. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a contractual obligation. And we're, un, we're underfunded. We're underfunded to the tune of about uh, $892 million for the state side of things and $547 million for the political subs, a total of about uh, $1.4 underfunded. 2046 is addressing a, a couple of things. The unfunded liability, we're looking at putting some dollars in to get closer to being funded. And then we're considering closing the defined benefit plan for state employees in a future time and moving them into a 401k type retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And so that takes a lot of planning and a lot of discussion and a lot of stakeholders. We have the counties, the cities, we have the state employees. We, have, we don't affect the teachers, we don't affect the judges or anything like that. 
So this plan is addressing what should we do with a $1.5 billion liability facing the state of North Dakota that we have promised to pay. Yeah, and that, that's huge. That's a huge. So one of the things, it's really, I think it's hard for people who have not heard this type of thing before. It's hard to really understand what it is and why it's important. And you, you've touched on that. You, um, the, this aspect of what we call an unfunded liability, a future liability. So it, you referenced 401k plan. So a typical plan, if you're in a business or whatever, you have a retirement, it goes into a 401k. To whatever degree it grows, the market does well, it grows a lot, it doesn't do as well, it doesn't grow as much, but that's your money and it's set aside. Defined benefit, which is what the state employees and the municipal employee, many of the municipal employees are on, is a defined benefit, which means if you work for us this long, I'm simplifying it, if you work for us this long, you're gonna get this much money for the rest of your life. And it doesn't matter how much the good the market does or it doesn't do. Um, and so what happens then is that we can't meet that. The market can't meet that demand. And so new people coming in, people that, are, that just got hired last year, their retirement, the money that goes into their retirement is partially for them, but part of it is paying the people that were there before them. And it's, so it's a Ponzi scheme in essence, like Social Security. Would you, would you say that's a well, too I was, strong I was going to mention the word Ponzi uh, are, okay. because that's exactly what it is. And, and currently, Rick, there's uh, about 12,700 employees who are already retired. So they were there, they worked, they contributed, the employer contributed, now they're taking out benefits to the tune of about $220 million a year. Hmm. Our, our fund at this point in time is about $3.8 billion in value. So there's a lot of money there. So we're not going to run out of money. We're not going to not be able to pay the benefits. But because of the market valuations that have, you know, we've had a, a big dump and then now the market's accelerated, how they determine the actuarial value to be able to pay the benefits, they use a five-year average. Mm -hmm. And so the last couple of years, the market has gone crazy. So we do not have the full va value of those last two years of the market going up very much. We look at it over a five-year rolling period. So that gives you a little bit of, a, of an unfair number. But the point is, we are unfunded right now, underfunded right now, and we want to address it. The other thing is, are we going to continue guaranteeing the benefit for future employees that are hired? And what this bill says is no, two years from now, roughly, all new hires in the state are going to go into the 401k type defined contribution plan that most employers have. Mm -hmm. The ones that are in the defined benefit plan are going to have a choice. Do they want to stay in the defined benefit plan and have their retirement paid for them that's guaranteed in the plan now? Or do they want to take their ca calculated amount and dump it into their 401k plan? Now, somebody might have 150000 200000 whatever the number is, move it over to the defined contribution plan, and now they can use that when they retire. So we're, we, we have a dinosaur of a retirement plan, that, that, and, and we're not the only state, Rick. Oh, There's no. many states that have the same type of plan that are, Illinois, I believe, is about $7 billion underfunded, maybe even larger. And so it's time to address it, and we're, we're, we're going to be receiving some federal funds, $1.2, $1.4 billion. We don't know if there's any ability to take some of those funds to, to uh, help the unfunded liability. We just don't know because there's going to be strings attached. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm thinking about people who want to work for the state. And, and I think that the retirement package is always an enticement for people to work for the state. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this guaranteed retirement. And as people are listening to this, they may not be aware that this is a situation that the funding, that there's a struggle there. So have you talked to state employees at all? Like, are they aware that there's this challenge that is being faced with the state and the finances? Yeah. The, the state employees have uh, representatives through the PERS board and some of the organizations that, like Nick Archuleta represents state employees all over the place. Mm -hmm. So they have representation. They understand the, where they're at. And you're right. They love the defined benefit plan because it guarantees a benefit. Mm -hmm. However, the younger employees that are beginning to come to work for the state if they would put their dollars into the defined contribution plan, they would most likely create a larger retirement benefit and they would own it. One of the disadvantages of a defined benefit plan is you get a retirement benefit once you retire until you die. But if your account were worth, let's say, $500,000 or a million dollars and you die two years after retirement, you could have a survivor benefit for your spouse, but the remainder benefit stays in the plan. Mm -hmm. Under the 401k type plan, you own it with, and you, you can will it to your heirs and to your spouse. So there are trade-offs in, in, in how these plans are designed. Yeah. 
Yep. I think it's awesome that you are taking it, you're going to give the option when it goes into play that they can choose to take that lump sum and transfer it into a 401k or choose to keep it as it is now. And it's going to be that. totally employee choice. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. One of the things, Candy, <clears throat> you mentioned it's a, such a great, you know, that they look at it as a, a wonderful value. Yes. And it is um, in, in some regards, although the long term, as, mm -hmm. as Representative Casper just pointed out, is not necessarily quite as rosy as it might seem. But the problem is, even if it is this wonderful benefit, it's on the backs, not of us. We can have this wonderful benevolence and say, yes, you get that wonderful plan. But we don't have the responsibility. It's our grandchildren yeah. that have the responsibility. And that's just wrong. And that's why, that's why Representative Casper and others are looking at ways to take the, the, this good fortune we have with this revenue, the opportunity with new CARES and COVID money and all that jazz, um, and really turn things around. We attempted this in 2011. And when I say we, I wasn't there yet, but it was attempted mm -hmm. in 2011. Yeah. One vote away in the House. And the amount of money to correct the situation has more than doubled sure. since 2011. Sure. Yeah. We, if we had done it then, it would have been so much cheaper. So we have to do it now. Yeah. And, and the political will has to be there because it has to pass both the House and yeah. the Senate. I think, I think the final version will pass the House. I think the struggle will be, what does the Senate want to do? Yeah. And we're really, there's so many times it's day and night between the Senate and the House and the Republican side as well. So we see things differently. Well, after listening to you, you know, talk about it's going to be on the backs of our grandchildren. I do hope that they will think about that and that they'll vote responsibly with this. It would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, Jim, uh, let's let's uh, come back at the next segment. We'll talk a little bit more about this and maybe uh, touch on a couple of other things. All right. You bet. All right, folks, uh, hang with us. We will be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. We're the ladies of another view, bringing you a fresh view on local issues. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Oh my gosh. Isn't that, that the most condescending, funny. rude email you've ever on received? Well, welcome to National the third term of a certain president. I really believe that. And different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to hold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. 
It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, hello, welcome back. It's No Apologies on Beck, your after hours oasis of sanity. I'm your host, Rick Becker. Our co host tonight ah. is Kendi Chase, and our esteemed guest is Representative Jim Casper from Fargo. From Fargo, yes. Fargo. And uh, I always have this fear that when I say, is it wet Fargo or West Fargo, if I get it wrong, oh, someone's going to throw something at me. <laughs> and there's a rivalry. Yeah, I know, I don't get it wrong. Um, all right, so I want to kind of wrap up a little bit the. the um, Pension reform. So, folks, it's important for you to know, uh, if you hear about this, it may seem like it doesn't affect you, but it's important. It's important for the state of North Dakota. It's important for your children, grandchildren, and, and their children. So we do want to see action on it. I know it's hard to get excited about something that you can't see any direct benefit, but, but it is there. Within this bill, there's, there's an opportunity, although it's coming possibly in another bill, but somewhere we are hoping that we can get some income tax relief passed as well. And um, I guess what we're looking at is an opportunity for, uh, depending on what ending balances are and legacy fund earnings are, we have the opportunity to buy down, I guess, if you'll call it that, the income tax. And uh, do you want to just touch on that? Well, Rick, we're, uh, we're going to spend uh, roughly a billion dollars more than we did in, in the last session. And uh, that's a lot of money. And the question is, what are the people in North Dakota getting back except more services? You know, you hear the bureaucrats come and say, well, we have to provide more services. We have to do this, so we need more money. What about the people that we're taxing and, and, and we're spending their money? Mm -hmm. So there is part of uh, the bill on, on the pension reform that has an income tax relief fund put in it that will come from the, the stream of revenue from the legacy fund. And the bill is designed at this time to start with $60 million dollars and if we fulfill all of our obligations, we can then give some people some income tax reduction, both individually and corporately. So that we're at least starting to look at some income tax reduction. We've tried property tax. We, we laid an egg on that. Oh, boy, did we. And so we no. wasted, a, well, let, let's put it this way. We spent, you know, over a billion dollars and it didn't work. All that happens with the political subs is where the property taxes go up. It's the legislature's fault. It's not their fault. But they're the ones who do the taxing, and they're the ones who do the spending. It's, no. So it's, a, it's just a, a vicious circle. So we need to give the people some income tax reduction, and, and that fund is being established to do that. You're exactly right. And, and Jim, that, that point cannot be overstated. Last session, we had a record budget. And this session, we're going to exceed that budget by probably over a billion dollars. Over a billion dollars. In addition to that amount of spending, we're getting over a billion dollars in federal money for CARES, COVID, all that jazz. We've got that much money. If we can't get pension reform for your grandchildren, and if we don't get income tax relief for all the citizens of North Dakota, in light of the spending that we're doing and have been doing for the last 10 years, every one of us should be thrown out. Kendi and I were talking earlier about, about disgruntled grassroots rising up. Every single legislator should be thrown out if you do not get true pension reform and significant income tax relief. Well, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't go that far because there, there are <laughs> legislators up there, including yourself and myself, who are trying to get the reform needed. So there are some who are trying to do the right job, but we're outnumbered. I know. The ones that are not on board, throw them out. But keep the ones that are trying to do the right job in there because you have to build on, on the on the nugget of people that we have there. I, you know, I moved here from Arizona 10 years ago, and the reason, or 11 years actually now. The reason we moved here was because of the mismanagement of government's money. And I mean, recession phew, caused our business to dwindle. So we came here, and I remember North Dakota bragged like crazy about how fiscally responsible they were. <laughs> and we felt so lucky. We're like, oh my gosh, we are going to such a good state. They know how to manage their money. And now to be in this position, I'm like, what has happened? It's crazy. 
Well, you know, the oil, the oil is a blessing and a curse. Yes, that's true. Because it's given us so much revenue that the, the desire to spend, not only from some legislators, but for the people saying, we want more here and mm -hmm. we want more there, and the bureaucrats. And, it, and it's also the curse that we are spending too much money. Our, our budget, you compare us to South Dakota, I mean, we are, I mean, it's a joke how much more money we spend with, with smaller population. Yep, absolutely true. All right, Jim, let's, uh, I know sports betting is near and dear to your heart. Tell us about sports betting. You had a couple of bills in session here. Let's. Yep. I was a co-sponsor of the uh, sports betting bill that would have uh, put the question to the people. You, you need to amend the, amend the North Dakota Constitution in order to allow sports betting. I was a co-sponsor of the bill. That failed in the Senate by two votes. All it would have done was, was put it on the ballot and let the people, our, our constituents, our citizens, decide if they want sports betting. Now, here's some interesting numbers. It's estimated by the sports betting world that currently there's uh, close to $400 million per year spent and bet on sports betting from North Dakota citizens. Mm. And it's, it's being done wow. illegally because it's illegal to do it in North Dakota. So they're going offshore. They're going with their telephones and so on. Nobody's catching it. And the revenue that could be generated from taxing that's, that money that's being spent anyway is, is many, many, many millions of dollars. We're losing that as well. And then, of course, there's no protection to the sports bettors in the state of North Dakota because it's illegal. So if, if something happened that they weren't paid or what have you, they have no protection. So we just wanted to let the people in North Dakota vote. 26 states have already voted to have sports betting. Mm -hmm. It was just opened up in, in May of eight, uh, 2018 with the Supreme Court ruling saying, it's unconstitutional that Las Vegas, Nevada can be the only place. So now 26 states are going and opening it up, and we couldn't get that and let the people of our state decide. That, that's too bad. Interesting. Do, do you recall what the vote was? Was it close? It was, it was two votes, uh, 20, 22 yes, 24 no, I believe. Mm. Failed by two votes. We needed the reverse. Interesting. And then I had the other bill that would have set the regulatory structure in place. That I was the prime sponsor of that bill. That got just a few votes because once the constitutional amendment bill failed, then it was easy for the Senate to kill that. I wish they'd have passed that bill because I think there will be uh, an initiated measure to put it on the ballot, but the bill, the bill that I was uh, proposing would have allowed kiosks to be located in small towns in North Dakota where we have these gaming places in, in the convenience stores or the charitable places. Mm -hmm. This would have allowed a kiosk, like a, like a machine, so people could place their sport bet right there so we could create local uh, business opportunity for our small towns. That was in my bill that we would have put the regulation on, and that failed. Yeah, well, very interesting. Yeah. I, I, you know, a lot of folks are not big um, proponents of gambling. They have concerns about addiction, things like that. But, but for me, I, I, I'm always in favor of uh, government allowing people free choice. So, and I'd sports like to... betting is, is uh, people. You have to, you have to think about it. I mean, this isn't where you pull a button or push a button. Mm -hmm. It's where you have to think. Okay. These two teams are playing. What, what is the difference between what the experts say the, the winning score will be and which side of the equation do you want to bet on? So you, it, it's some thinking. So it's more than simply pressing a button. Yeah. I'm it's a sport, I think. I'm, I'm kind of opposed to gambling personally, but listening to you speak, you know, it is a way. I mean, money is going outside of the yeah, state, so yeah. it is a way for us to capitalize on what's already being spent. People aren't going to stop sports betting. No. So matter, are we going to regulate? Are we going to license? Are we going to tax? to protect our citizens and put the revenue stream in North Dakota. I think it's a, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, prohibitions Fine. rarely, if ever, work. We have a prohibition oh, on true. sports betting, and yet, Jim, you've just indicated North Dakotans are sports betting like crazy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's like anything else. Anytime right. you mention a, a bill that prohibits, we'll, I, we can show you an example sure. where it's not working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely yeah. true. Um, in the last uh, minute you have here, anything else um, about the session? How are you feeling yeah. about it? Well, you end, know, this, this session has been very, very uh, frustrating, very disappointing. The, first of all, the COVID, you know, what, what that did were the people not coming and all that thing. I don't have to tell anybody about the COVID because they all know. But it took away the opportunity for us as legislators to have more of, of a give and take with our constituents. It kept people away from the Capitol. And so, therefore, that was strange. Then the, uh, the ethics bill stopped the associations from having uh, dinners where they invited all of the legislators, the Democrats, Republicans, all the elected officials, where we would mingle with each other, get to know each other. There's some of the Senate members that I don't even know that are new members. Those are where those social things work. And if you can't have social, social interaction, get to know people, get to like them, get to trust them, you don't form relationships. Mm -hmm. So those relationships 
I have, have hurt, been hurt a lot. Yeah. So I hope in the next session uh, we're back to more normal and uh, hopefully, you know, heaven forbid if that COVID would spring up again, just hope that, that God takes it away from us and takes, takes the curse from our land and that we can get back to more normal. So it's been very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Jim, it's been very enjoyable having you. Very informative. Appreciate it. I, uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, we'll do it again sometime, although this session's almost over. It is, yeah. I'm, <laughs> Our, I, get, I travel quite a bit, so, you know, I get okay. to Bismarck, so it might work. That'd be great. Awesome. Awesome. All right, folks, hang with us. We'll be back. Josh Boche is up next. We're the ladies of Another View, bringing you a fresh view on local issues. And different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. Watch No Filter with me, Debbie Schlussel, for no-nonsense, unfiltered analysis of the news that matters to you. You'll see engaging guests. It began a 444-day nightmare. Entertaining analysis. And it has everything to do with something that happened in history. And honest movie reviews. Trust me, this is just atrocious. No Filter with Debbie, weeknights at 10 p.m. Central on Beck News and online at Beck.News. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's Hot Dogs, Calzones, and our delicious Jumbo Buffalo Wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York to go. We deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Hey, welcome back. It's No Apologies on Beck, and we now have Representative Josh Boche, Minority Leader um, in the House. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, good to be here, Rick. It's, uh, I'm happy to have you on. You're my first Democrat. All right. Aww. Yeah. Well, I'll break you in softly. Bust then. the cherry, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so so uh, there's so much we can talk about, and, uh, you know, not to disappoint folks, but we're not gonna we're not gonna go to fisticuffs. Not this time. There may be another time when Let's I would love to have a good, hearty debate uh, and, and and knock it out. But I think it's good uh, for our viewers just to kind of get an idea of like who you are, what you're about, how it is that you work um, in the legislature, and then I've got my own comments. Um, but to start off, let let our viewers know who you are and how you got involved. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks again for having me. It's good to be here. Um, I grew up in Minot. Uh, I represent North Fargo. I was first elected in 2012. Uh, and so my district boundaries, the NDSU campus goes to the river north of downtown up to a little bit more farther north, uh, North Fargo. So very residential neighborhood. Um, 
campus employees, downtown life, um, so pretty vibrant, a lot of great things going on there. Uh, but like I said, I was first elected in 2012 and uh, was just reelected for my third term. Uh, this is my second session as the minority leader in the House. Uh, and you know, while it's a great privilege to represent uh, my caucus, uh, it certainly comes with its challenges. And sometimes I don't know if uh, Majority Leader Pollard has more headaches than I do uh, with more folks, or if it's just being a Democrat in the North Dakota legislature creates its own headaches. But yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. What was it that made you want to get into politics? I'm always curious to know, like, what was it that spurred you to this place? Yeah. Well, my involvement, I worked in higher education. Okay. Um, and in that time, got involved with some, you know, the healthcare movement and some things there. Um, so I learned the power of electing good people and people who represent the values that are important to you. And so I helped friends get elected to city council, had some people run for the legislature. Um, never thought I'd run, never had a desire to have public office myself. Um, but... Uh, then in 2000, what would have been 11, I uh, was recruited to run and said no several times. And finally they twisted my arm enough that I ran and was fortunate to, to win on my first election. Awesome. Yeah. Candy, when I first got, so we both were in 2013, right? Yep. Yeah. And um, so I was, I don't know, idealistic and naive. And I had, I prepared, I got all these, I got two books. I, I remember one of them was, I think it's called The Morality of Capitalism or something. So I got books for every legislator and a little note, and it's just <laughs> stupid, right? But, um, but it was great because, Josh, uh, I, I didn't want it to be political. It was certainly yeah. philosophical, which lends itself to being political. But uh, I remember, Josh, you told me that you, you kept that book and, Aww, <laughs> and awesome. had it, and you got, you got ribbed a little bit, uh, yeah. you know, about having that. But, huh. but I always, uh, that always kind of struck a chord with me that, that you're not afraid to be open to things and looking at things and, and having discussions, and I found that to always be true. Yeah, but well, I still have the book. <laughs> uh, awesome. I, I read it that session, but I, you know, I'll have to reread it to refresh myself. But yeah. you know, I think that's important. You know, I have to understand what's important to you, yeah. so that the things that are important to me, we can find that common ground. You know, there certainly there's a lot of things that we don't agree on, but there's you know certainly some things we do agree on, and so it's how do we find those solutions to work together. And I think that's awesome, just you mentioning being open to new ideas, because as you're representing the people, I mean, they're going to present things to you that may challenge your own personal belief system, but as you represent them, you have to be open to their ways and their uh, ideas. You, you represent the people. Yeah. So thank you. Well, when we're elected, you know, you're not elected by your political no. party. You're elected by the people in your district, and, and they certainly make up all political stripes or no political stripes, and so have to be open to listening. And, you know, sometimes you agree, sometimes you don't. And I think the hard, I tell folks the hardest part uh, of every day is pushing that button because I have to be able to explain why I push the red or the green button. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just pushing a button because of an ideology or how I feel about an issue. I have to be able to answer the question when someone says, why'd you vote for that? Or yeah. why'd you vote against it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. And the, uh, the, I think the important part too is, is um, understanding someone who has a different opinion, and uh, as far as both sides, obviously. If you understand the motivation, and if you understand the desired outcome, it's interesting how far you can, how far you can get. And I mean, not that there's been a ton of those opportunities, but, but if, you're, if we're open to it, then, then we always allow that possibility to occur, I think. Um, so you indicated about, you know, Chet, is, is it harder or easier having to corral so many people? You've got fewer people. I wanted to talk about that. Um, is it, do you find it frustrating to have a super minority versus, say, a large minority? Is, is, do you feel that it's difficult to have more relevance, or do you think it's really the same if you're not in the majority either way? I think it's the same regardless. Because, you know, when I came in, when we came in in 2013, there was 23 of us. And I think at times we were just as effective with 23 as we are with 14. Um, and it really comes down to, again, building those relationships. We're not going to get everything we want. Uh, we're not going to get a lot of what we want. But there's some things that we want and we get done, and, and that's through working with our colleagues on you know, the, the majority side um, and, and introducing legislation, again, that has common ground and can find some um, flourishing. And, and I think nothing can be more true than a number of bills that even this session that have had success, such as the, the bonding bill, uh, investing in North Dakota First through the Legacy Fund principle and so forth, which were bills we had versions of last session that no one else had. So, you know, it might take a little bit of lo longer time, and we don't necessarily need the credit because good policy is good policy. Right, that's true. Um, with regard to that aspect, the bonding and so forth, do you do you think do you think a component of you said it was last year, but we're not doing it till this year? 
in your opinion, is it just the timing of things, or do you think that there's a resistance to pass because it was a Dem bill? I think there's absolutely resistance to pass uh, because it's a, a, a Democratic idea or led by a Democrat, and um, you know it's unfortunate because again, it doesn't allow for those opportunities to have some real honest conversations about issues that are important to both parties. Um, I think the same could probably be said for some of the bills introduced by members of the Bastiat Caucus that are part of the Republican Caucus. Is, is you know someone sees whose names on it and all of a sudden some of the credit is thrown out. Instead of really listening to say, well, this is a bill from a constituent, or this is how it impacts my job and, and the experiences I have. Um, so I think with time comes a, a little bit uh, some sort of flourishing or, or uh, good marination of ideas. And uh, while people might not recognize that it was our idea before, uh, moving it forward again, it's something we can support. Interesting. All right, um, what I'd like to do is uh, bring you back for the next segment, hopefully just a little bit longer. We can hash some of these things out in a little more detail. Folks, we'll be right back. Hang with us. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we've put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water. The key ingredient to making our signature New York style pizza. We also feature Yiro's with the region's only Yiro meat spit. Plus, Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14 inch or our special giant 20 inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Welcome back to No Apologies. It is our final segment tonight. Folks, good job. Congratulations. <laughs> you hung in there. You're almost through this wonderful, wonderful extravaganza we call No Apologies. Representative Boche, thank you again for being with us. Let's get right into it. There's so much more I want to ask you. Okay. You're, you, you have a bit of a situation. Super minority in both chambers, no statewide elected. Uh, officials in the Democrat Party. I frankly don't think that that's an optimal situation for the folks of North Dakota. Number one, how did you guys get into this situation? Number two, how do you get out? Sure. 
Well, you know, I think first and foremost to remember that there's still 110,000 people who voted for our statewide candidates in the last couple elections. So, uh, you know, I think sometimes people want to say that we're irrelevant or because we have small numbers, um, well, our opinion doesn't matter or Democrats shouldn't have a say. Um, and so I appreciate you saying that I don't, that you don't think the supermajority party system uh, is a good outcome for North Dakota. And, and I think what we need to do as a party is what we've been working on the last year, which is really Again, building back at the grassroots. We were a party that was, you know, we had the privilege of having a congressional delegation that would send home the pork, um, did a good job representing North Dakota, um, but at that time was not building the party on the grassroots. And that allowed, um, I think, the Republicans to focus on more local issues, more issues important to North Dakota. And now that we're seeing that flipped, where the Republicans have all the statewide seats, have the congressional de delegation, and the majority in the legislature, we have the opportunity to start talking about issues that are important at the gross, grassroots level as well. Yeah. So the plan, what do you have, a 10-year plan, a five-year plan? How do you get back? Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's naive to think that next election we're going to sweep uh, state seats. But, it, you know, it's certainly a long-term plan. And a lot of that is making sure we're talking about, again, issues that are important in North Dakota. The biggest challenge you and I have as local elected folks is most folks don't know who their legislator is. They know who maybe their city council person is or who's in Congress for them. Um, so it's how do we help people understand that there's a difference and there's important work that's being done here on North Dakota issues. It doesn't matter necessarily what the federal government does because there's still enough policy and things that we can do to either react or uh, complement what's happening at the federal level. Right. So in your party, I'm just curious, uh, talking about grassroots movements, what are those issues that your party is seeing as being key that the people should be concerned about? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of folks are concerned about local health. We've had a lot of conversations about telehealth mm -hmm. and that delivery. And, and while we've gotten on that conversation about telehealth being a part of the solution, it shouldn't be the only solution. Because if you're in rural North Dakota, you shouldn't only be able to see your doctor through a video screen. You know, I'm in Fargo. We're in Bismarck right now. We can go see a variety of different physicians and health care providers. But if you're in Rugby, North Dakota, or in uh, Stanley, you should have the same ability to access the health care. So we hear a lot about health care. Um, you know, I think especially at the rural level, again, throughout the state is property taxes. And that's certainly something we experience both in urban and rural. But often, if we weren't providing so many different tax incentives at the urban space, um, the, the rural space has less tax base. So how do we fund education? How do we make sure that we have quality schools providing opportunities for kids and their families? So, you know, again, getting back to those issues that we can address here in North and not necessarily need to be solved or worked on in Washington, D.C. Got it. I see it as a, um, so if you look, if you think about a spectrum on political ideology, in my mind, the Republicans have expanded so much that they cover a very large portion of the spectrum, leaving only a small portion of the spectrum um, for you guys as your playground. And, and it's a matter of how do you reclaim and, and come back into uh, more of that spectrum so that you're not appealing to only the 100,000 and leaving the 600,000 North Dakota, well, that's not the voter tally, but you know what I'm saying, the ratio is, is a bit off. Um, if you reclaim that, then it's going to be more of an appeal to a, a larger base and the parties then start to actually mean something more to, to North Dakotans. And that's why I think it'd be so much healthier. Okay, um, I don't mean to <laughs> monologue you. I've got a quick couple questions. Biden administration is freaking me out. Why? Uh, because I think, not to go down this rabbit hole, I, I don't know that Joe Biden is in full control of his faculties. I, I think that Joe Biden in a healthy situation, I don't mean that disparagingly, I, I, I have personal, yeah. um, I, I think Joe Biden in his healthy days would have been someone that I could have understood, not been afraid of, supported some ideas, opposed other ideas. It, it seems to me that that's not Joe Biden. It's it's someone on that that is much farther left on the po political ideology that seems to be getting their agenda through. So you said why, getting rid of filibuster is that a thing? And they're talking about it. I'm concerned about that. And maybe 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 we don't need a filibuster. But I'm concerned that we're, our political swings are going to be because once it's gone, it's gone. And then uh, adding justices to the Supreme Court. Again, now, sure, when I'm, my side's not in control, I'm afraid of it, right? But I can tell you, and you probably believe me, if it was the other side, I would be opposed to it as well. Because no matter what, it always goes back to the other side eventually. Yep. 
And I, so those are, just let's pick those two things. So my response is, look at what Joe Biden's response has been in both those situations. He's been a moderating force in those conversations. He's been the one, he hasn't come out and said, we need more justices or we need to get rid of the filibuster. He said, let's look at our options. And specifically around filibuster reform, uh, or filibuster, the filibuster, it's more about reform. It's how do we get back to what the filibuster was? It's not just filing a piece of paper with the clerk of the Senate and you get to disappear for three weeks and something's being filibustered. Mm -hmm. You're gonna filibuster it, stand here, fight for it, talk about it. Why are you holding up this nomination or holding up this bill from moving forward so that people have to get to 60 votes to be able to pass something? So that's what I think I've appreciated about a Joe Biden is at a time when we are hyper-polarized as a, as a, as a country and in our, in our state, he has been someone that has brought moderation. And we've even seen him, sure, shift to the left a little bit because I think that's where our country is going, especially the, the, the um, growing number of the population as we get younger and more diverse. But we shouldn't be afraid of, I think, that progress. Instead, we should be looking at how do we have conversations? How do we find so that no longer is Congress sitting down and having a conversation? They're sitting on cable TV, pointing fingers, talking to their audience. Well, I, that I agree with, and I that is too. regardless of who's yep. in power. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still a little worried. Uh, you know, when I see, I, I could take, I could take what you're saying and and appreciate it because it's a matter of like, don't listen to the rhetoric. Look at the actions. And I said that about the last administration. A lot of rhetoric, actions, not not as hyperbolic. But I am looking at Joe, uh, President Biden's executive orders, and and that has that. I mean, that's coming from the White House. Now, that's not as, as frightening as some of the other things, but there's some heavy stuff in there that uh, it, it, it just shows a complete shift in how, I mean, really, it's a completion of the transformation that Obama uh, wanted to create for America, and that's what concerns me. Right, and the previous administration, Trump administration, did executive orders, too. And again, that's a that's function true. of Congress not working. If they're not doing it, then the executive says, well, you've given me this space, and your inaction is creating me, and then Congress isn't challenging that. Right? They aren't yeah. then introducing the policy that would uh, challenge the executive order. Uh, and so they let it go, and then they continue their fight. Perfect. I, I may not disagree with you there. <laughs> Josh, thanks for being on. Yeah. Folks, thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night. Kendi's back yeah. tomorrow night. Stick on back because No Filter with Debbie is up next. I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.